Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service on Remembrance Sunday. My name is Kim Mason. I'm a part of the church. I'm a part of the church staff here at St. Mark's Church, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to worship. Um, the few people who are gathered to be a part in our service, and mostly to everyone who is gathered at home. I hope you are comfortable and ready to worship with us. We have one very important notice at the start of our service today, and I'm going to invite our church wardens, Alison and Dave, to come and share that with us. Uh, good morning. We're very delighted to be able to uh, share an official appointment notice. The Bishop of Leeds is pleased to announce the appointment of the Reverend Michael Resch, currently Team Rector, Sittingbourne Team Ministry in the Diocese of Canterbury, as Vicar of St Mark's Harrogate in the Episcopal area of Ripon in the Diocese of Leeds. The details of the licensing service will be announced later. And Dave's going to say a few more words. Yes, so we're, um, we're all very excited and on the... Um, Tuesday the 27th of October we had such a blessed day uh, when Mike and his wife Liz came to interview through the series of the day and in the morning um, there were different members of the church family who were able to uh, share with their enthusiasm for life at um, St Mark's. Uh, we are immensely grateful for everybody who participated in the, inf uh, in the interview day um, and was able to get this message across uh, to them. Um, in, the inter in the afternoon, we had the interview panel, which was chaired by Bishop Helen Ann, uh, with Archdeacon Jonathan, uh, myself and Alison, and um, Graham Archer, that, uh, who was acting as patron. Um, uh, we enjoyed meeting all of the candidates, not just Mike um, and his wife, and um, the decision was made in one mind. It was very clear that, that, that Mike stood out. Um, um, Mike and his wife Liz um, have been at Sittingbourne for uh, 17 years. And obviously, after 17 years of being somewhere, um, they need, now need this period of time to say their goodbye and leave well, especially during this time, which basically uh, in COVID, which might make it an even more challenging task than it might have done uh, previously. Um, and with that in mind, we're conscious that um, a lot of us will be very eager to, to touch base with them, to, to get to know Mike and Liz as soon as possible um, and make them feel welcome as part of this family. Um, but um, with, with this in mind, we, we've agreed with Mike and Liz that uh, we should let them focus on their ministry until the new year, and, um, and then at that point, we'll be able to, to get in contact with them, and, and I'm sure they'll be able to introduce themselves in more detail after, um, after the Christmas period is over and we're into the new year. Um, they're hoping to come um, sort of towards February time. So that's... Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I've missed a little bit out. Um, <laughs> So, so during the process, thanks Alison, um, during the process we have had a piece of scripture which has been very prominent um, to, to me and Alison and, and the wider leadership team of St. Mark's, which I'll just read out to you, which is Proverbs 13 uh, verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And we have trusted God um, in this process. We have allowed him to work during this time. And though we've often probably felt a bit frustrated ourselves at the, the length of wait, um, our hopes have been fulfilled and we give thanks to God for who he has provided to us. So that's how I'll That is there. such exciting news. I'm yes. sure we will all be rejoicing about that appointment. Why don't we just take a moment to pray for Mike and Liz and their family? Father God, we thank you for your hand that has been guiding us through this vacancy and appointment process. Thank you for that testimony um, that you were really present on Tuesday and that all of the panel were um, in a unity of mind in their appointment of Mike to this role. Father God, we pray for Mike and Liz now that you would pour out your spirit on them, that you would encourage them and strengthen them for the task that they have in leaving their parish at Sittingbourne, and that you would put um, vision in their hearts as they come to us and to lead us forward. Bless them, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much.
Well, during our service today, we are going to worship God together. We're going to confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. We're going to hear the word of God read to us and preached. And we will be spending time remembering those who have given their lives for us and for our country. This year, our act of remembrance comes in the midst of a global pandemic, the cost of life of which we have yet to fully understand or measure. Yet already we have, felt, we have felt the pain of loss and of death. But we've also seen the beauty of sacrificial love and service. And so in our service today, we will remember the armed services and those who gave their lives in the great wars. We will remember those who continue to serve in the armed services in conflicts around the globe. But we will also remember those who have lost their lives serving us in other ways, as nurses, as doctors, as key workers during this time. And we will pray for those who continue to put their lives in danger, to love and serve and protect us. At the start of this service, why don't we just take a moment to still our hearts and our minds to become more aware of God's presence who promises to dwell with us. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in times of trouble. We are going to start our service by singing together the song, the wonderful story of our God who comes to help us in the midst of that trouble.
shortcomings of the world, the world's pride and selfishness and greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. And we're also going to confess our share in that wrongdoing, our failure to seek and establish the peace which God wills for his children and his world. So let's each take a moment to call to mind our own shortcomings, the ways that we've strayed from God this week. So using the words on your screens at home, together we pray. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, rejoicing in that freedom and that forgiveness that we receive from God, we're going to sing together the splendor of the King. The splendor of the King Clothed in man let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb The Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how Good and 
Father God, we do thank you for your greatness. We thank you that you are greater than all the things in this world that would stand against us and stand against you. Amen. It has come to our attention, if you are viewing in from home, that we had a little bit of a hiccup with the streaming, so we're really sorry about that, but hopefully you are back with us now. And Alison is going to bring our first reading for us. Joshua, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. The waters of Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Joshua set up the twelve stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan, at the spot where the priests had carried the Ark of the Covenant. They are there to this day. Thank you, Alison. I'm going to ask Barry to come and read our gospel reading for us. A bit closer, Barry. A bit closer. The second reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 to 16. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you may ask in my name, the Father will give you. Thank you, Barry and Alison. We are drawing towards 11 o'clock when we will keep two minutes silence with the rest of the nation. And on our way there, I wanted to share some stories of people who have given their lives for us. Um, I have stories from some of the armed servicemen who who died during the war. 
and also some more recent stories of people who have died from, correct, from contracting COVID while serving in our hospitals. So the first, Private Harold Ward of the 10th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. Harold Ward was the third son of Mr. and Mrs. Harry Ward of 8 Ashfield Terrace. He was killed in action whilst his brother George was also serving in Salonica. Private Stephen Royce of the 1st and 5th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. Private Stephen Royce of the West Yorkshire Regiment, the son of Mr. and Mrs. J.F. Royce of Harrogate, died in hospital at Le Havre in France. Private Harold Abbott of the 2nd and 5th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. Private Abbott, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Abbott of Mount Street in Oatlands Mount, was posted as missing on the 3rd of May. Private John Mason of the 2nd and 5th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. Mr. and Mrs. David Mason of 3 Hookstone Road received information from the War Office that their second son, Private John Mason, had been dangerously wounded and was in hospital in France. He died later in hospital in France. Second Lieutenant Henry Elston Appleyard of the 12th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. The notice in the Harrogate Herald read, Deep regret will be felt at the death of 2nd Lieutenant Harry E. Appleyard of the West Yorkshire, who has been killed in action in France. He is the youngest of two brothers who hold commissions in His Majesty's forces. He was 20 years old and joined the West Yorkshire soon after war broke out. He had been in France for a year. Second Lieutenant Harold Appleyard was the well-known town's cricketer and centre three quarters in the Harrogate Old Boys rugby team. Shortly after leaving school, he became a playing member of the Harrogate Cricket Club. He was almost immediately a success, especially as a bowler. He sent down a medium pace ball and got a low swerve on his arm and the ball he had a puzzling breaking back, which made it very difficult to play. He was also very useful with a bat. He was the son of Mr. Henry Appleyard of Barnaby Bank in Selby and Mrs. Appleyard of 31 West End Avenue. And Private Francis Cecil Yates of the 1st and 5th Battalion West Yorkshire Regiment. Private Yates was 23 years old. And more recently, we remember Josie Ann Zalma Ebenaja Ricoli 
a 55-year-old nurse from Harrogate. She was an agency nurse at Harrogate District Hospital with more than 30 years' experience. After falling ill with COVID, the mother of five children was admitted to Leeds General Infirmary, where she had used to work. She died this year on the 13th of April. Her daughter Naomi said of her, it meant everything to her to be a nurse. She's been doing it for as long as I remember. We also remember Kulasani Nakala, a 46-year-old mental health nurse in Leeds. Known as Cooley to his colleagues, he was described as selfless, a mental health nurse who always put the patient first and always had a smile that lit up the room. The chief executive, Dr. Sarah Munro of Leeds and York NHS Partnership Foundation Trust, described him as well-respected and loved by his colleagues. He was an active member of the Trust Workforce Race Equality Network. And the chair said he was a man of integrity and honour, who believed in fairness and had an outstanding ability to put people at ease. Wherever you are this morning worshipping with us, perhaps you might like to stand as we join together in two minutes of silence. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country, those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure and all those who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
representing our armed forces, Deborah Brown representing Girl Guide in UK and Simon Rollinson representing the Scouts will now come and lay wreaths in remembrance. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let's pray together. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted by death or by life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, please do take a seat wherever you find yourselves. And I'm going to invite Dan to come and speak to us. Dan, could I, I won't come and lay a hand on you, but can I pray for you? You can, that would be great. Thanks, Kim. Father God, I thank you for Dan and for the word that you have given to him for us this morning. We pray that you would use his words to transform us more into the likeness of your son. Amen. Amen. Well, today is Remembrance Sunday, a day when we remember with great gratitude those men and women who served in two world wars and in more recent conflicts. It's good and right to remember their story and to give thanks to God for them, to recognize the part that they have played in allowing us to live in the freedom, freedom that we enjoy, freedom that so often we may take for granted, but a freedom that has come at such a great price. Now, it would be a mistake for us to think that remembrance is simply about the past about what has happened. Our remembrance is not simply something in the past, but something that we make present here and now. And as we bring into the present memories and we retell stories that took place in the past, we do it so that it will sh affect us and shape the way that we live now and into the future. Remembering the past enables us to live in the present and have life for the future. Today we remember and we have remembered some stories of some local soldiers, but we remember those who have been crushed under the heartache of war and those who are being crushed by it still. We allow the reality of war to come home to us so that peace can, home, can, can come home to us too and take root in our lives. And as we do that, the promise of God is that the tiny lights of our small acts represent, uh, the, the small acts that we represent will become part of that great light that no darkness can put out. There is another way, and by God's grace, we will find it so that we no longer have to watch youthful veterans march past the cenotaph as we gather to remember. We remember the tragedy and cost of war, but with gratitude give thanks for those who fought for our freedom. It inspires us to continue to strive for peace and to work for freedom. Remembering the past enables us to live in the present and have life for the future. This year we're living through the COVID-19 global pandemic and the fallout that that brings with it. 
I'm sure that many of you have been touched by this already. Perhaps you've contracted coronavirus or someone you know has. Maybe some of you have experienced the death of a family member, a friend or a colleague. Many of us will know people working on the front line in the NHS or caring sector, those that are seeking to treat the ill and support the dying. In a recent news article, I came across some quotes from some NHS workers. Gemma, a ward nurse, said, I still have nightmares most nights about being completely out of my depth. We are all in PP, PPE all the time, recalls Nathan, a senior intensive care nurse at a hospital in the Midlands. All you can see is people's eyes. You can't see anything else. He's, he describes trying to help junior members of staff survive long and difficult days. And I'd see their eyes as big as saucers saying, help me, do something, make this right, fix this. The pressure was insane and the anxiety just got to me, he says. I couldn't sleep and I couldn't eat. I was sick before work. I was shaking before I got into my car in the morning. Now, hearing those stories, it reminds me again to give thanks for all those working in the NHS and caring sector. It reminds me again of the price that is being paid and it inspires me to pray for their protection and safety. Remembering the past enables us to live in the present and have life for the future. Now, I'm not sure what your memory is like Mine's pretty rubbish, I have to confess. Uh, I struggle even to remember the date of birth of my own daughter. That's how poor my memory is. Uh, so I was kind of slightly relieved when I came across another article that kind of reassured me that I'm not the only person that struggles with forgetfulness or, or trying to remember things. There was some research done, and it said the things that people most often forget, names, 83%. Where something is, 60%. I wonder if you've gone upstairs to get something and then when you've got upstairs forgotten what it is that you've gone to get. Or perhaps, have you had that experience where two people are at the same event, yet what they remember is completely different? Or are you the kind of person that only remembers the things that are important to you? Throughout the Bible, God gives his people places, celebrations, and liturgies by which they are able to remember what has happened in the past in order that they can live differently in the future. You might remember the story of the Passover, circumcision, the building of altars that we come across throughout the Old Testament, baptism, the Lord's Supper, to name but a few. In today's Bible story, as the people of Israel were finally approaching the banks of the River Jordan after wandering around in the desert for 40 years, they are finally approaching the promised land. And as the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant that represents the very presence of God himself into the waters the waters part so that the people of Israel can walk into their promised land, their new home. Now after the people of Israel have crossed the Jordan, Joshua instructs 12 men, one from each tribe, to take up a stone from the riverbed and to construct an, an altar that will be a memorial of what God had done for his people, Israel, forever. It was to be a physical reminder of God's great action and provision for his people. God knows in our humanity that we're so forgetful, that we easily forget what has happened. And so he 
instructed Joshua to build this altar as a constant reminder to the people of Israel about who God is and what he has done. We read in that text that the altar was to be a reminder. It says, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them what the Lord has done for his people. The altar was a physical reminder to the people about God's saving action. It was a reminder about who God is and what he had done. You see, God knows human nature. And that as time passes, memories fade. A memorial keeps remembrance alive. We wear our poppies. We gather on this day not just to remember those that have died, but to commit ourselves to a future that is different because of our remembering. We are called to remember and we're called to act as peacemakers. When we see the rainbow with the NHS underneath, again we are reminded of the doctors and nurses and the carers that are working to care for the sick and the dying as a result of COVID-19. We continue to remember those workers with thanks. We pray for their protection and we commit ourselves to living in such a way that seeks to protect our NHS, those working on the front line. Remembering the past enables us to live in the present and have life for the future. Now, as we look around our world today and we see the effects of war, we see the fallout, the pain, the suffering as refugees arrive by boatload on the shores of Europe. In the midst of a global pandemic at the start of a second lockdown, We see the number of COVID cases increasing daily, our hospitals filling, and the death toll steadily rising. It can be very easy to be overwhelmed, perhaps almost to the point of despair. We might well echo the words of a U2 song. Heaven on earth, we need it now. I'm sick of all this hanging around. Sick of sorrow, sick of pain. Sick of hearing again and again that there's going to be peace on earth. But we know as Christians, with confidence and assurance, that ultimate peace and justice will come only at the end of time with the completion of the kingdom of God. When Jesus returns to take his rightful place on his throne. But that doesn't mean that we just sit around and wait now. As followers of Jesus, we are called to be people who usher in the kingdom of God here and now. We are bearers of the good news, of hope. We are bringers of reconciliation. We are servants of the Lord, enabling his kingdom rule to flow through us. Until that day of completion comes, we continue to look to the cross, a physical reminder, again, of of Jesus' great love expressed in the giving of himself to die on the cross, to pay the price for human sin, to reconcile humanity back to God so that we can become his children and he will be our God. The cross is the ultimate reminder of love, of sacrifice, and ultimately of victory. Jesus didn't remain dead. After three days, he was raised to life. He overcame the power of sin and death. He is the victor. And he will return to perfect his kingly rule of justice and mercy. He is coming back. 
He is the King. And we can look forward to that day with hope and with an assurance that he will right all wrongs. So whoever, whatever, wherever our thoughts turn today, we acknowledge love laying down its life for others. And we recognize that there is no greater thing that one can do than lose one's life for the benefit of others, for freedom and for liberty. Freedom is never free. It always comes at a great cost. Remembering the past enables us to live in the present and have life for the future. Amen. Thank you, Dan. What a good reminder of the high bar that Christian discipleship sets for us in the way that we live in the future, in a way that ushers in the kingdom of God, that demonstrates the qualities of that kingdom as we live here. Remembering the past allows us to live in the present well and to have hope for the future. So as we remember the past, we are going to sing a song together to remind us of all that Christ did for us when he died on the cross. In Christ alone.
are going to turn to a time of intercession and I'm going to invite Poppy to come up and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Poppy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We came out once and applauded our NHS carers and key workers. We are so thankful for all who put themselves on the front line for us. We are so thankful for those who go unseen, yet our lives would be impoverished without them. We painted rainbows as a sign of thanks and solidarity without knowing that the rainbow is a sign you have given us of your presence, your promise, and your love. Oh God, be with us all. Do not forget your promise. Fill us with your love and enable each of us to love abundantly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us, who today remember the cost of war, to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Amen. We are going to join together now in an act of commitment as we commit ourselves anew to the service of God and the service of our brothers and sisters in the world. You might like to stand as we share some words together. So let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow man and woman that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Together we pray. Lord our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope. 
and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. And we will sing together our national anthem. As we draw towards the end of this time of worship together, we are going to sing our closing song, Give Thanks to the Lord, our God and King. It has been such a joy to be able to share with you in worship this morning. Please do join us throughout the week, Monday to Friday. We have midday prayers and we would love you to join us for that. And during lockdown, we will be live streaming from church, but without a congregation every Sunday at 9am and 10.30am. It will be lovely for you to join us. For now, a final blessing at the close of this service. God the Father by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>